Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar number three in our series of Library Access for Success. It's presented by the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Livestock Systems. My name is Jim Harper, and I want to welcome you and uh, welcome to all our viewers on Facebook, as well as those who are watching this as a recording. This webinar is about search strategies for successful literature reviews. And right now I'm going to turn things over to the true master of today's <laughs> ceremonies, Lenny, and uh, he's going to introduce you to today's topic. I'm the only master today, so we will proceed. Uh, so we're going to briefly look at a couple things here. If we go to the next slide, I think it discusses a table of contents. Searching strategies, very briefly, because these should be pretty routine to you. Then we're going to go back to Agora, which is the uh, FAO and publisher partnership, which grants access to journals and eBooks and other resources in 106 countries and territories in the world. And then we're going to briefly look at useful free internet search tools to identify research and great literature resources, a couple search engines, a couple databases, and a couple repositories. And if we're able to, we'll do some uh, demos uh, as we go through this whole process, OK? So we just briefly want to put this slide up here to show you that there's a process when you are doing a search. You have to ask questions. You have to define the needs, identify the concepts, select terms, select sources. Then you do the search, and then you revise it, OK? And eventually, you evaluate whether your search is successful. So this is a good, this slide is a good guideline to remember to follow when you're doing a search, OK? Very briefly, we're going to go over a couple strategies here. Uh, so, water management issues and rice production. So what's the question? Number one is you're asking what water management issues are associated with rice production. The type of literature you need is scholarly, scholarly primary research, main concepts are water management, rice and production, and then you start dealing with other terms, broader terms as cereal cultivation farming, synonyms H2O, uh, cultivation usage, alternate spellings, et cetera. So we've done the first four steps of the previous uh, chart. So then we move on here, and I just want to briefly mention, next slide, yeah. There are three sources, uh, three types of sources of information, tertiary meaning basic encyclopedias, textbooks, uh, secondary sources are adjunct, abstracting services, biographies, reviews, but we're going to try to look at the original research conference, conference papers, posters, journal articles, case studies, dissertations, and things like that. Okay, so there are these three levels of search in, of uh, sources, so to speak. Okay, last but not least, I think I have one or two more slides on on searching, yeah. So this is kind of a, a graphic of what would happen with, you see in red, water issues, rice, and production. And then concept one becomes water management or water usage. So you have a new result, which is number one or two, and then concept two is issues, and issues could be problems. And concept three is rice, so you can make it broader and cereal. So then you have two more terms in there. And pollution could be production and cultivation. So then you have a total of 13 terms combined in this search. And analyze if you need more terms or less terms. OK, one last slide on this, I think. Oh, no. Yes, we're going to look at three. Uh, everybody knows about Boolean operators. Here's an example of the AND operator where we have combined bean and cultivation and pests and that little oblong, I don't know what to describe it as, that little area in the middle combines all three terms. So this is a way of making your search more precise. Okay, so the combined area of the three circles uses all three terms. I'm sure you've all used this 
search tool, this Boolean operator, is or. So this is a way of broadening it. So we're looking at beans, and we want to look at legumes too. So it's a combining two synonyms, and you can see how it overlaps in the middle, but you're bringing in a lot more terms, a lot more results by doing this, okay? By putting in parentheses of quotes, beans or legumes. And the last one is to eliminate, which is not operator, and you want to look at pigs, but you're not interested in guinea pigs, <laughs> okay? So the, the circle in the middle is both pigs and guinea pigs, but over on the left, is, the darker part is only uh, the livestock. It's not the guinea pig in this case, okay? So that's another good term to use, although it doesn't necessarily work well in Scholar. Shall we proceed? Okay. I'm just gonna mention, I, I mentioned this before, the quotes of the parentheses. To pull together exact terms, for example, you wanna look at pests and bean cultivation. So you put them in the parentheses or quotes. Uh, for plurals, you can use the asterisk and pesticide, asterisk will give you pesticides or pesticide, program, asterisk will give you program, the two spellings. And then also you can use a question mark if you want several different spellings alternate spellings within a term. This really applies, a good example in health is gynecology, which is spelled uh, an English way and a US way. Okay, so then I think we now finished with a little brief review of searching strategy. So we're going to go to login, which we've done on the side, so maybe we can actually do a search. Uh, if you need more information about Agora and the different access points to it, go back to the previous webinar. Webinar. Again, you'll have to check whether your institution and your country is eligible for this program. But if you are eligible, you, there are numerous uh, agriculture-related journals and books and other resources that would be available to you. Okay, so we can quickly log in. Here's where you put in the username and password, which we've done previously. And then you get to see five different programs. And in some cases, you may be interested in some environment issues. And you could also open that program or some health issues that relate to uh, livestock and things like that. This is over. Okay, so we're going to open Agora, which is agriculture, forestry, fisheries, et cetera and climate and food security. So you can see an issue like climate also goes over to uh, the environmental program. So each institution briefly again gets a password and researchers, faculties and students can use the password. If your institution is registered, the librarian should have this. If you do, your librarian does not have the login information, write to this uh, address. In fact, I'm doing a, for the health program, a user's EDL learning course, and someone wrote in and said, I can't find, I'm the librarian, but I can't find the password, and I sent them off to this uh, address at the bottom. Okay, so let's move on here. Uh, what is Summon? It is a Google-like search engine that provides fast, relevancy ranking results. Enter the search term in a single box. There is an advanced search. You can refine or limit it use by certain basic criteria, such as date, subject, academic journal, and other options. You view the results, and you can link directly to the full text. Okay, it contains links to the resources that are available by country in e-journals and e-books. All the research related programs have this same tool. So if you were in the health program, you could search using this same tool. Okay, so now we go to the initial slide. Uh, this is the content page, and you can see that you could put a search right in there, such as food security and drought. But we encourage everyone to use the country-specific search. 
the reason you use the country specific search is the resources that are available in your country will be listed in the results. And uh, since this is a public private partnership, publishers can choose to grant access to their journals and books or not by country. And I'll show you an example of what happens very soon. So we're going to go country specific search. This is very routine, the searching. It's very easy. Uh, the people in the user course, uh, the health user course, mastered this without any trouble. Everybody got a 90 or 95 or 96 on this section. So none of you will have trouble actually doing this kind of physical searching. We're opening up Cambodia. It is one of the participants in Feed the Future program. Correct? All right. Okay. So we're going to open Cambodia. And we, and you can see also there's a generic one at the bottom if your country is not listed. Almost all the countries are mapped, but there are always some uh, anomalies and some issues and not everyone has been mapped or a new country becomes eligible or something like that. So we are now going to go and do an, a, open the search box. We are in what Cambodia gets. And thanks to Sam, one of our colleagues, I have this search. High protein forage and dairy production and developing countries. Okay, so we have, we're going to do this search and the results will pop up. And you can see it's a very large term. So we'll deal with those issues soon too. For, and it's basically by relevance, the initial ranking, just like you would see in Google. Uh, there are some other options, such as the date it was published, that you can choose. You can see up in the top box over 13,000 articles, which is really way too broad a search result. Okay? On the left, you can see journal articles, you can content type, journal articles, book chapters, ebooks, book reviews. You can also see a publication date option. You can also see a discipline option. For example, if we chose only agriculture, 9,590 would be the results. I'll repeat this later on, but you can set up these refinements before you begin your search. That's what my colleague who couldn't be here today reminded me to tell you. Okay, so, and you can also use the quotes. Let's go on and you'll see an example here. We have our 13,000. Results are significantly smaller if you use the quotes. So even though you can see high protein forage and dairy production brings it down to 1,138 results. High protein forage and dairy production only in developing countries. Developing countries has to be together 3,000 and then we when high protein forage and dairy production and developing countries, and now we have 184 results. You can see by using these quotes or using the refinements in the left column, you can get a more manageable number to work with. Okay, and, and as you, when, when you get results in Scholar, you sometimes get very big numbers. So it's important to realize how you can make it a more precise search. Okay, so we will proceed on here. Now, to show you that countries have different numbers in the results, I did the exact same search in Ethiopia, a country where fewer publishers grant access. Some of the major publishers feel that they can sell the material commercially and have chose not to make it available in Ethiopia. So you can see the search results are significantly smaller all about 60% is available in Ethiopia, whereas we had the much larger number for, I did Cambodia, right? Okay, let's move on here, because it's pretty routine. We are opening up uh, citation number two. It says full text online. You click on this, and theoretically, it's supposed to work right. This sample does. Full text, we go to, actually we go from summon search tool to the directory of open access journals, which is a participant in this program. And you can get the full text as a PDF or an HTML, 
HTML of that article. PDF, of course, looks more like print. HTML will have hypertext links in it. Okay, so click on that. Go to the next one, and I think we have open, uh, go to the publisher, and the publisher itself is saying you can download the PDF. I will tell you, Springer is a publisher that is part of the Research for Life programs. In many cases, it chooses not to grant access, but if you look in the left side, it says open access. This is an open access journal that this publisher has or an open access article, and this is the reason you're able to get the full text. Okay, and I think I have a slide with the PDF coming up next, and you all know how to download PDFs. Okay, so we have successfully opened up this journal in Biome BMC Genomics about the subject that we're interested in. Now let us go back to the search results. And we are going to try citation number one. And what I'm going to give you now are examples of what happens when this does not work right. Okay? And uh, all of you that have worked uh, know that sometimes you think you're going to get full text and you're asked to pay $40. Or you go to Google Scholar and there's a link and it says, no, you have to pay. Okay? So this case, we're going to article full text. It says, oh, we should have it, no trouble. You open it up, and wait a minute. This journal, Cambridge University Press, says you must log in, okay? And the Agora password will not work, and you're stymied. But we have a plan B here, okay? And this is really important to remember. Don't give up if you're in summon and you cannot get to the full text. What we do is we, write down or we copy paste the article and the citation. Okay, we want volume 12, issue eight of, where is it, Animal is the name of the journal. Okay, we want this article. So what we do is, go to the next slide, we go back to the content page of Agora. Note it says logged in from Cambodia up on top. So we're now, we're going to open the A list of journal collections and we identify the journal and you can see the green means that you have access. So we are now on our plan B, our way of making sure we can get this full text. And this is an issue that does happen in Summon with some frequency. So we click on animal displayed, we look up issue number eight, we're logged in through Agora, and we can open the full text this way. If we went to issue number eight, we could get to the specific journal, and you can see right on the, on the right, it's a, there's green boxes that checks access you have to these different issues. Okay, so we have solved our problem, and this is a very important lesson to learn. Next, I think we do one more search, full text online, go to document citation number nine. We're going to open number nine and, uh-oh, I think this is Elsevier, yes, and it's saying check access or purchase. So you have this problem again. Again, I think the next slide shows you that you can get to the access of this full text by going to the title, Animal Feed and Science, Elsevier Journal, it's in green, you have access to it, okay? So then again, we, and okay. So we again have solved the problem. So I gave you one example that worked right and two examples that didn't work right, but you can see you can work through. Uh, if you got to a green symbol and it didn't work, then it really helps to write to the Research for Life help desk and say, I've done everything right. There must be a problem at your end. And this does happen too, okay? So a couple quick other options in Summon. I don't wanna to spend too much time on it because we wanna explore some websites after this. Uh, preview option, you click on that and you get a little abstract or summary. Uh, here it is, ruminant, ruminant livestock, capability, blah, 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 blah. So you can read this in advance. 
before you decide to get the full text. Very useful to have this abstract. Okay, a couple other features we're gonna talk about. If you click on the little envelope, you can send the citation and also the preview if you want it to an email address. And this may be useful if you're working in, uh, on a public computer in a laboratory or a library, a uh, computer lab or a library, and you say, uh-oh, I don't have a, a flash drive with me, but I need to remember this citation. Okay, so then uh, click on email, and here it is, and you can put a message in, and you can send the email to yourself. So that's a very good option to know. Or you have a colleague say, okay, I just found this article, go into your Agora, go into your, if you're in a, a graduate student in a, in a university library, go in, read this article, we need to discuss it. This is exactly what our research is about. Okay, so there's one other option to talk about here. Uh, I think it's the part that's hidden says save. Okay, so we are going to click on these three symbols and save these items. And then we're going to display the save list. And it says you can export it, or you can print it, or you can email it. Okay, it's showing the results that I have clicked on the three results. So again, you have to remember with this, so at the end, to clear all the saved items or they will sit in this queue until you go uh, out of the system. Okay, so that's the second option. You can export them, print them, or email the citations. Next, we'll briefly talk about how to refine your search. My colleague Michelle said, you can set these up in advance. Refine your search. I want full text only, or I want scholarly and peer-reviewed articles only. I want only journal articles. Oh, wait, I'm doing a lecture for students. Let me look at the book chapters, because that'll give me basic information, okay? Another way to look at, uh, to specify it is by publication date. I want to know the literature that, uh, was published in the last six months, the last 12 months. So you can do that that way. And then also you can see that there's a, by discipline, agriculture, vet medicine, engineering. So let's see, we'll play a little with the results from the original search here, I think is what we do next. We, well, the slide was made August 29th this year. So the citations for this year, sorted by relevance are 721, okay? So we could also, and they all happen to be, 713 of them are journal articles. Again, if you leave, you have to remember to clear these filters or they will remain for any future searches. Although you may want to keep them on, that's your choice. So we have now 721 articles from the last year for this search. Again, if we had done the search and put developing countries in quotes or dairy production in quotes, we would have smaller numbers. So we're now looking at content type and you can look at only the book reviews, the ebook, the journal articles, so you can limit it to a content type. Next, I think there's one or two more slides on this. Uh, I'm reminding you, okay, you can look at the book chapters and I'm also reminding you to clear the filters at the end. Okay, so now I think we go on to, here's an example of the advanced search where you can set up all these uh, limits, another word for it is filters, all these refinements before you start a search. Okay, we could put only agriculture, we could put I limit to items with full text, we could exclude book reviews, we could make this search very precise and then put the keywords in at the top of the page. Okay, I think um, I should make an example where everything is listed on this page. So if we're able to, we're going to try to do a search. 
Now, Jim's going to have to come up with some subjects for us here. Okay. Because my expertise is more in health. But, oh, my colleague has sent some. Uh, okay, we're going to try one. Okay, so we're going to go, we'll just, uh, let's go into another one of the countries for country-specific search. All right, country-specific Right search. below, right below, yeah. Let's click on that. Pick a country that uh, is in this program. Okay. Oh, we're getting the uh, getting oh. organized. So let's pick a country that's in this program. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, All right, how about Rwanda? Rwanda, perfect. Okay. So what this is now is you are getting the search results for what is available in Rwanda through this program. Okay, so this is, in other words, even if all the links don't work right, you're not getting extraneous links to uh, citations that you cannot have access to. If you want, I have, a, I have a search here, okay? We're gonna do cattle, in quotes. Oh, mess. Oh, let's, you want, you want to do the mess, mastitis te test? Sure. Let's do that. Okay, put it in, put it in quotes at the beginning too. Okay, and we'll add another term. You want to use developing countries? Cal. Put developing countries in quotes and let's see what happens. I usually put and in, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so we now have 19 results. So we don't have to limit it in any way. We have 19 journal articles. Okay, let's put in and, and, and see what happens. We're just being here, still Same. just 19. Let's remove developing countries because some of the tests that are used elsewhere may be relevant, okay? Okay, see it changed it radically. Let's put in and Rwanda. Now you wanna know if there's been any research in your country, okay? Ah, we found four. So I think this was a good example of what, how you work with the system, how you play. Now obviously, since you have four, you don't need to put the last 12 months in, okay? Uh, and there may be another synonym for, let's put in California mastitis test, because that's okay. In quotes. Let's put California, yeah, put California in there. And let's get Rwanda out, because we'll have maybe one, we know we don't have many. Oh, we're back to that 416. Okay, so let's see if we added developing countries in quotes. I think you can take cow out because the test is, is okay. Oh, we're back to that 19. So let's put in Africa. Just, no, take out developing countries and put in Africa. Our last, and then we'll go on from here because we have some other things to look at today. 43, okay. And then in fact, the second one is from the Mazanzi district of Rwanda. So it would have been one of the ones that would show up in the other search. I think this was successful, Jim. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good example. Yeah. And it was something that you were curious about after you had made that uh, video, right? So this worked out real well. Okay, let us go back to the slides and see where we're at. Okay. If we can display this. All right, we're going to switch hats a little. All right. All right, and we're going to go into this world of gray literature. There are some very useful tools for finding gray literature. 
Now, what do we mean by gray, gray literature? Deals with production, distribution, and access to multiple document types. Could be from government, academic, business, organizations. Uh, we're looking at print format. What we're doing is we're going outside of the research literature that is published in journals, in peer-reviewed journals. And the reason we want to do this is sometimes organizations have very useful information, but we don't know how to get to it. So I'm going to give you a couple useful tools. Anybody that's listening today, anyone that reviews, uh, listens at a, a later point, Go and search these with subjects of interest to you. And we're going to probably, I think we have time to do a bit with the, the California mastitis test. So let us proceed. We're going to look about six or eight of them that we seem to think are the best. Next. Okay, just a little background here. Gray literature, hard to find. It's, there's incredible number of of articles, reports uh, that are on the internet. Speed, self-published, it comes up quickly. It's free, access is free, open, immediate. Quality, highly variable. It's hit or miss. It's not archived like in a journal, in a basic website, okay? Uh, versus published. Much slower due to cost editing process. Uh, cost is high, uh, unless you're in a program like Agora, your a library has to pay for a subscription and you have to go through all these steps to get to it. Quality is excellent, edited, peer reviewed. Much more stable than the gray literature, okay? So we have these two worlds, but you can find useful information in the, in the gray literature besides the published literature. Let us go on to a couple examples. What is it? It's finding the hard to find. There's yeah. A link. What there's, a link, is there's a link to a, a manual that gives more examples about this. Okay. All right. We've mentioned Scholar. Scholar does include gray literature because it'll have abstracts, it'll have thesis, it'll have pre-publications before someone actually publishes it in a journal. Uh, the thing I want to remind people about Scholar is if you go into Agora and you click in the right column on databases for discovery, you get into Scholar there. Some of the links, if you go through Agora to Scholar, more of the links work. And again, if you see something that should, has a link and doesn't work, you could go back to Agora, to the journal's A to Z list and look up the title that way, look up the citation, look up the journal article that way. Okay, so I just briefly want to mention Scholar, but it is embedded in Agora and the links sometimes actually work and you get more access to full text. Okay. Uh, directory of open access journals. It's up to 1 1.6, 1.7 million articles, okay? Uh, we're going to do a quick note on the left. You can look by subject, broad subjects, biology, biology and life science. There's nothing specifically for agriculture. So we're going to do a quick keyword search the famous search, and later on we can use Jim's search. So I've done uh, high protein forage and dairy production and came up with 31 articles. And there would be full text to these. Uh, many of these journals are embedded in Agora. So you would get these same kind of results in, from Summit in Agora, but I'm just trying to show a different way to access it. So we have come up with 31 articles with access to the full text. Again, we're now in the areas where you don't have to be uh, subscribed to, you don't have to pay for. These are all free resources that are useful. So that's briefly one. Uh, people are gonna say, 
Why are we in something that's talking about medicine? Okay, we are now in PubMed Central. The reason we're in PubMed Central is it has five, uh, oh, I didn't switch. 5.2 million. Yeah, 5.2 million articles are archived. Okay, if you receive money to do research from USAID, from the National Science Foundation, from the National Institute of Health, the, pa the author must put a copy of the journal article in this repository. Okay, so it could be published in a very sophisticated, fancy, peer-reviewed journal that would cost $2,500 to have a subscription to. But a copy must be deposited here. So even though it says medicine, PubMed Central, there's a lot of useful agriculture information in it. So we're gonna do a search and see what happens. Okay, here's my famous search. It's hidden up there by this. Yeah, if you went in, the, in that line up there, it would have high fructose, is that high fructose, high protein forage, and, oh, there are the terms. Proteins, proteins, forage, the same search. And look, we got 277 articles. And everything has a link to the article, the HTML version, and the PDF. So this would be a tool that you could use in agriculture, even though it says it's PubMed Central. Okay? So this database is very, very useful very relevant to trying to identify, and these are peer-reviewed journals. This is the more sophisticated kind of research. But we'll go on to another example. Again, why in the world are we talking about open access to biomedical image search engine, open eye? Every one of those articles that was in PubMed Central has images. And all those images are in that data, this little open eye. So you're doing a lecture, you're doing a presentation, you're doing a, a presentation to ministers, to students, to faculty. Uh, you can get images that are relevant. So we're going to do a search in this. High protein forage. Why not? Now, again, if you're teaching, you're lecturing, some of these images may be very valuable. And if you click on the image itself, the information about it comes up, the, the text information, the, what the image is about, what the research is about. Okay, so it's linking it back to the, but I, 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 I'm not in agriculture, I'm not in livestock, so I'm not sure what all these images are. But if you are in making presentation, this could be a very valuable tool. I was pleasantly surprised to see all these images when I put in high protein uh, forage. Okay? So this is how far we got. Okay. Okay, so then these are really crazy because these are Google custom searches. So I am in, you type into Google, non-governmental organization search engine, and you get to this page. The logo has disappeared. I don't know why. I've searched this a couple times in the last few days. We put in our favorite search. And look at this, because it's Google. You have 1.6 million results. But again, the relevancy ranking clicks in, mm -hmm. and the most relevant one should be at the beginning. Notice, these are from organizations. But look at the titles of the articles. Fodder shrubs for dairy farmers in East Africa. Advances in sown legumes. Uh, forage more milk, forage reduction for small scale. These may have some useful information. It's not as I say, it's not a referee journal, it's not research, but there may be a protocol, there may be a little experiment, there may be a report that could be extremely useful. 
Okay, so this is the non-governmental organization one, and now we're gonna to proceed to the intergovernmental organization one. And we've done our same search, but look at these results. All of them on this page at the beginning are all documents from FAO, okay? And you would think that some of these would be useful, okay? I'm not the subject expert, you would have to look at it, but look at the one at the bottom, legume trees and other fodder trees as protein sources for livestock. This is what we're talking about. And again, these will not be in a referee journal, they will not be in Agora, they will not be in Summon, but you can find valuable information this way. Okay, uh, I put this one in, although I'm, I'm not sure. What it does is it's a gateway that looks at 99 different national, international scientific databases and portals. So you can do a search in this and you get results from all these different portals. The problem is that very often it's linked to commercial entities and you have to pay to access the text itself. Okay, then again, you could look for the titles in Agora. Okay, I just put that one in. This one's fascinating too. 5,400 thesis and dissertations. Many with links to the full text. So we're gonna click on the global ETD search. In the middle there, we can go to the next slide. And look, <laughs> uh, again, I've used the same search. We're being pretty consistent at least. And look at the results we get, okay? 92 theses are so theoretically about this subject. And that's, that's uh, maybe these were turned into journal articles, maybe not. But you can find some very, uh-oh, we have a problem. Okay, you can find a very uh, good list of thesis and dissertations. Uh, note in the box, the horizontal box at the bottom, the terms that you could also look up. A dairy production, high forage dairy diet, uh, lact lactational performance. We having a technical problem here? Yeah, so why don't I check that? Go ahead and keep uh, describing what's going on in the slide. Okay, um, I need to go to the next slide. Bring you the next slide? Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, I just want to talk a one, about one or two more resources. Uh, this one is called Open Door. Uh, it's a directory of all the different open access repositories that a lot of universities and research institutions have created. And at the time I did the search, there were 2,600 academic open access repositories. Will you find reports? Will you find thesis? Will you find other material that wasn't published? Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, we've opened the subject area access to Open Door, and you can see that agriculture, food, and veterinary, there are 154 repositories, and you can look at the repositories and search within them to get agriculture related information. Okay, let us move on to the next one. Uh, this, again, I'm not too sure about this site because you'll see in a moment. It's a search tool for open access research papers. We've put in a search. And again, the same search. And it shows, this is what's crazy. It shows you 9 million articles found, which is just uh, with 1.8 million articles in English and all these other subjects. But again, if you start looking at the initial results, it, they look like relevant uh, articles. ePrint, uh, a repository, T-Store, and you can get the PDFs of them. So again, this is something that you may want to explore on your own. 
I think we now go, uh, I won't just want to mention this appendix. Many institutions in the developing world have developed DSpace uh, repositories. And it's a free software from MIT, and you could get your IT people to look at this and download it, and you set up different categories and different communities, and you can then put in your institution's uh, papers. But I, I don't want to go into any more detail about that. Let's go. Exercise two. And we have Jim's. We have Jim's search. Okay, so we're going to put in D O H A org, and it should come up. And Jim, you're going to put in California. Okay. The test, the mastitis test, right? Quotes. I think so. Let's see what results we get. Okay, 159 articles. Okay, so again, many of these should be in Summon, which is in Agora, but if you're not in a situation of being able to get to that, you can just go into this uh, directory and do your search. <coughs> Let's go, uh, should we add uh, and Africa or and uh, developing countries, just out of curiosity. Although 159 isn't a difficult number to work with. It's okay, so we're down now to seven. General South African Veterinary Association is the first one, two, three, four. Okay, so let us go on to the second search. We're gonna go into this PubMed Central. Okay. And please put your search in. Okay, here we are. Again, a very uh, a decent list. And if we click on, uh, well, let's click on one and pull up a PDF. Oh, uh, you could have gone rightly. Well, here we are. Okay, top right, if you click on the top right, there you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, it seems strange to be searching agriculture terms in a PubMed Central database, but because of the arrangement and the funding requirement, uh, there is a lot of agriculture material in this, Let's see what happens. Well, down to 31. Let's try developing countries uh, put together and then we'll try the thesis one. And then I think we're getting near an hour, uh -huh. which is a good amount of time for this. Okay, down to 17. Yeah. Oh, well, what I meant is you could click on if you go to the bottom of the first citation, you can go directly to the PDF there or the article. Yeah, by clicking on that. So the links are right there for the, you to very easily use. Okay, there we are. And again, you can see Elsevier, a very big scientific technical medical STM publisher, uh, very expensive, is a participant in Agora, but doesn't always grant access to every country, but you're getting the full text because it was pub the money came from a US agency. So let's try the last one. And then I think we have okay. Use these same terms. Yeah, use the same terms. Then we'll take developing country out. We had it, now we lost it. Uh, 
there we are. There we are. Let's see what happens on thesis. And, and you understand there, there's 10. And you understand that thesis may or may not be reworked and published as a journal article. Okay, so let's take out developing countries. Uh-uh, got to take and out. Oh, it didn't disappear. Okay, let's see what we get. So we have 99. Some are in... Uh, Many are in Portuguese. Yeah, so that's interesting. Okay. We're missing the English language. Oh, yeah, seven. Seven. Okay, here we are. Again, some of these may be of use to look at these theses. And there are usually links. Let's click on one and see. It says read more. Look at number two. Scroll down number two. It says has links, read more. So you can get an abstract. Okay, and somewhere it should be a link to the full text. Let's go back. Uh, has links. Let's click on the title and see has what happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here's a description. Let's see if there's a link. Yeah, there it is. Links and downloads. Yeah. Uh, let's see if it works. It's coming out of New Zealand, Research Common, Citation, Permanent Research Common link. Okay. It's from a university in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not, uh, again, all of you who uh, either participated today or will review this, listen to it, the key is to go into these tools with your own search terms try to do a precise search and see what kind of results come up. Okay, and now we just have to say something about webinar number four, which will be my colleague Michelle, overview of Mendeley, uh, reference managed software, and the basic version is free. So we hope to see more participants for that next time. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Lenny. And uh, I just wanna say goodbye to everyone. Um, and remind you to go and register now for the next webinar by visiting this website. If you have any questions, you can email us at livestock-lab at ufl.edu. This has been a presentation from the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Livestock Systems. We thank you for joining us. We'll see you at the next webinar. <laughs>